today we're going to talk about this issue that everyone are dealing with and it's to accept the difficulties, the pain, the sorrow, the disappointments with love, with happiness, with joy, with faith. So there are many righteous people that are always teaching and guiding us that you should say thank you on everything you go through in life and you must praise Hashem and you must thank Hashem and you must know and remember that it's all for the good. And those righteous people have on who to count. We cannot argue with that very solid, known and famous ancient assumption. It's based on the Mara, on Mishnayot, on Midrashim, on words of Chachamim, on many righteous books, on many righteous people that was telling us verses that are saying that it's all for the good. But the issue is that many of the people that are trying to thank Hashem Barak on their sorrow, on their pain, on horrible feelings of loss, so they feel that they're lying to themselves in a way. They feel that they're just saying thank you to Hashem, but really their heart is bitter and far from Hashem. So they feel that this verse that I'm now going to mention is contradicting, is disturbing their thanks. The verse is saying, Bisfatav ki beduni velibo they were respecting me, honoring me with their lips, but their heart is still far away from me. So you see that there is also a verse that is contradicting that she taught to thank Hashem. So what are we going to do? You have verses that are saying that you must thank Hashem, that akol etova, it's all for the best, that the person must thank Hashem on the bad things, exactly like he's thanking on the good things. What are you going to do? You have another verse that is saying that if those things are not coming from the heart, you cannot thank Hashem. Those things are basically lies that you're thanking Hashem in Barach from not from an honest, not from pure point, but place. So I think that the only way to settle that conflict. is to come to that place that we will thank Hashem with a smile, with happiness. It means that we need to work on ourselves to understand what Hashem Ibrahim wants from us, why am I suffering so much, before I'm going to thank Him. means that I'm calling you to do what that I'm doing, and it's not to be afraid from the pain, not to be afraid from the challenge of Arguing with Hashem, questioning Hashem, investigating what really happens in our life until we'll reach the answer and gonna find the solution for our sorrow, for our loss, for our feelings that can be disturbed and hurt. A person is afraid, too afraid to take the truth that he feels inside and to go with it. He wants always to be Yotzei other people. He wants everyone to agree on what that he's doing. He wants everyone to accept his way. He wants everyone to, to agree, to tell him, yes, you're right, you're doing the right thing. He's not sure. He doesn't believe in himself. But Abraham Ivri, it's written on Abraham, our father, that his name was Abraham Ivri. And Rabbi Nachman of Weslev is explaining to us the meaning of the word Abraham Ivri, what means Ivri. It means that all of the world was in one side, and Abraham, he was Ba'ever Hashemi, on the other side. Everyone were on the left side, and he was the only one that went to the right. And also Moshe Rabbeinu. It's written on Moshe Rabbeinu that all of Am Israel were arguing with him. Everyone were suspecting him on, on Abonot, on sins, on crimes. Everyone. 
Every single one in Am Yisrael, in Am Yisrael was suspecting Moshe Rabbeinu on something bad. When it's written that Korach and Kol Adatol were arguing with Moshe, fighting with Moshe, all of the rabbis of that generation, all of the righteous people of that generation, all of them, all of Rosh Hashanah, and Hidraot, all of the judges, all of the leaders, all of the head of the holy tribes, all of them together were united against Moshe. But Moshe Rabbeinu, he was right and they were wrong. Think to yourself that you're standing in a position that all of the chief rabbis of all of the huge communities, from all of the rabbis from all of the synagogues, everyone together agree that you're evil and Hashem Yitbarach is choosing you. And that's the truth. But you need to have that power inside of you. I said it once in class that I, I said that thing many times, but also on that topic mentioned it one time in the class. I had, thank God, in my past, a very evil neighbor that was fighting with me, cursing me, arguing with me, trying to steal from me. And that person, he was using verses from the Torah to explain to me how evil I am and how I'm, I'm, I'm wrong and he's right. And he was bringing verses. And one time while he was cursing me like that, cursing himself <laughs> like that, so I... I got scared a little bit because I heard those verses and verses got power. But when you realize that it's an evil person that is using those verses against you, so the Torah for sure will not going to stand by his side to give him the pure power of Torah Chesed, of the Torah of kindness, to help an evil person against a righteous man, against a good person. So you need to have the power to stand against the Torah that is coming out of his mouth because that's an evil Torah. That's Torah Shel Mavet. It's a death Torah. It's not a real life Torah. It's not Torah at all. It's just a bunch of lies. Like that another religion can take the Holy Bible and to twist it and to take it to another direction. Just, you know, work with the verses. Like build another building, another thing like, with no connection to reality. People can take a live thing from, 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 from the world and to build an evil thing with it. A person can take a, a, a knife that you will use in the kitchen to, to cut uh, cheese and, and, and butter and, and vegetables and whatever to make food for your children. And he will take that knife and go and stab people. So it's not the knife to blame. It's not the verses to blame. It's the person that holds the knife, that holds the verses, to blame if he's hurting people with those verses. When King David was facing those people that were arguing with him and fighting with him, so they were not simple people, it was not workers or, I don't know, people from, uh, from the fields that came to argue with King David. We're talking about the biggest leaders of Am Yisrael, the chief rabbis, the judges, that were standing against David Amelech, King David, Achitofel, and, uh, and, and Doeg, Doeg, and, uh, and uh, what was his name? And Shim Ibn Gera, rebuking him and cursing him and bringing evidence from, from proofs they, from, from, by their shita, by their way, against his method, against his truth, and his Mashiach Hashem. And he's King David himself, not the one that, oh no, he's King David, he's Mashiach, he's Mashiach. No, no, the real Mashiach. He is David himself. He is the one that Shmuel Anavi, the Shmuel the prophet, he said that that's Mashiach Hashem, he's the one, he will, will be the eternal king of Am Yisrael. He's the one that, that, that owned the kingship. He's the one that Hashem in Barach said, sit to my side, to my right side. The real King David, the one and only King David, Mashiach Hashem, the eternal king of our nation, of the world. And he is facing those huge rabbis that they are all fighting against him and arguing with him and insulting him and bringing evidence from the verses and proofs against his assumptions and fighting him and arguing with him and contradicting him. And he needs to be strong enough to fight against their Torah, to fight against their wisdom, to find, fight against the fact that they are united, that there are few wise people together that are sitting and planning and consulting how to 
uproot him, how to destroy him, how to ruin every good thing that he's doing in the world. And he needs to be strong enough to fight against them. And that's exactly what that we're going through. Because every one of us is facing this reality that he knows that I'm not clever enough, I'm not the biggest Talmud Chacham of the generation, I haven't learned enough, I, I don't know everything, I'm not... All of those doubts, all of those questions that we have on ourselves are making us weak and sad and confused and depressed. And then we're losing our self-esteem and our faith in ourselves and then we don't know what to do. And we start questioning even those things that we know that we are right at. Because we failed once and then the Yetzirah is trying to tell you, look at you, you're a failure. And then you start falling into that uh, self-blaming, blaming yourself over and over and breaking your own spirit and, and falling for another sadness and another depression and another frustration. And again, you go with your sadness. So I found myself also struggle and, 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 and confronting those situations many, many times in my life. And I realized that the Yetzirah is tricking me. He's just using my goodwill to destroy, my, to destroy myself. And then came to me that thought, that verse that Rabbi Nachman of Breslev said once, that positive thoughts are thoughts of truth, and negative thoughts are evil thoughts of the evil inclination. So I realized that every time that I'm angry, or sad, or upset, or despair, or whatever, it's the advice of the Yetzirah, and I'm wrong thinking that way, and I need to change my way of thinking. And every time that I have faith, and that I have confidence, and that I'm happy, and that I have hope, and that I want to do good, those are thoughts that Hashem Yitbarach is giving me, and I need to go with them. And now I don't have no problem, because every time I'm angry, I know I'm wrong, so I'm not being angry anymore. At least I know on what to work, to reduce the anger, to reduce the sadness, and to come back to myself, to relax myself. And every time that I'm happy, I'm not going to let no foreign negative thoughts to disturb my happiness and my joy. And even if I, today, told my wife, I'm a person that doesn't have no borders. That's the meaning of my name. My name is Dro. One of I have two names, Dro and Moshe. The name Dro is the, the birds of a sparrow. That it's a free bird. And on, in, the, in the parasha, the, the verse is saying, on, on the Karati Lachem Dro, that, that the Shemit Barach is... He's calling all of Israel Dror, means set them free. So Rashi is explaining the meaning of the word Dror, what it means Dror. Dror is a bird that cannot live in prison. He doesn't have that, that power to, to live in a cage. And that bird lives in all of the lands and it's free and doesn't, and no person got honor, honor, ownership on, on it, cannot control it. It's a free bird that doesn't own by no one. Like I always say, we're not working for no one. That's me. So, as a person like that, I don't have borders. That's me. I don't have borders. I must bring myself into borders of Torah Dosha to, to, to keep the Torah mitzvot. And it's a struggle for me. Because me, as a person, I'm a sparrow. I'm a, I'm, I'm a freelancer, I'm, I'm, I'm on my own, I'm an individual, that's me, that's my soul. And today I said that thing to my wife, I told her that there are people that when they see that the goals that they set to themselves are too high, so they're backing off. They say to themselves, you no, know, maybe I was putting stand too high standards, too high, I, I desired too much, I wished for too, it was too big for me, maybe I need to downgrade myself, maybe I need to reduce my expectations. My 
working, but for me, it doesn't work like that. So, my wife asked me, do you know that you're crazy? I said, yes, I'm sugar. I said, yes, it's not a problem. We're allowed to do the sugar. She said, what, you think that everything belongs to you, that everything you deserve to have everything, that there is a Midrash, Amar Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Akiva said, Kol Adam Chayav Lomar, every person must say, Kol Haolam Kulo Lo Nivra Ela, Bishvili. There is only one purpose, reason, why all of the wide world been created for, and it's for me. And everyone needs to say that. Everyone. When you are suffering, let's say now you have food, why you're suffering and, and you find yourself cheap and you're not sharing and you don't give other people to enjoy from your bounty, from your food, when you're afraid that you won't have enough for tomorrow. But if you know that all of the food in the world belongs to you, you won't care to give, to share, because you know that in every moment you can take another bag, you can take another loaf of bread, another bag, it's, it's all yours, you don't have a problem. You suffer when you feel that you lack of something. You're afraid that you won't have enough. Then you suffer. You suffer because you're poor in your mind. But when your mind is open and you're wealthy in your mind and you're rich in your mind and you're able to understand that the creation is built in a way that God wants to supply and to give everything for everyone, you will not going to suffer to give charity. You won't feel the pain while giving, while supporting, while helping, even from your time. Many people are trying to teach and to guide and to spend time with weak, weak people and to help people that are bala tshuva or whatever. They have good will to do that and then they stop. Why they stop? Because they feel Oh, I'm giving too much. I don't have time for myself. Now I'm teaching all of the time. I'm not learning. Why? Again, from the same reason. They think that Hashem is expecting them to do something else with their time. They think that it's not enough for Hashem that I'm teaching. So Hashem, because Hashem in Baruch, He commanded us also to learn. So I cannot teach because I must learn. Great. And I cannot uh, spend time with my children and with my wife in the house because I must learn and I must go to do something else. And I cannot take care of my health and go to the gym or jog outside or whatever. Why? Because I need to do other all of the time chasing ourselves, all of the time blaming myself, all of the time hating ourselves, all of the time punishing. Every moment of your life, you find a reason why not to be happy, why to suffer. You're learning Torah, but it's not enough. You're doing it, but the dude, that's not the right way to do it. But you've been to Uma, nah, it wasn't enough. Right? I, I could have done more. I could, I could pray more hours. I spent too much time with my friends. No matter what you're going to do, you're going to feel bad. Before he got married, he said that he's not married. After that he's married, he said that, he, that, he, that, he, that he's married and doesn't have time for himself. Now he's, got, he's upset why he doesn't have children. Now he's got children, he will be sad. He needs to give his time to the family all of the time. He doesn't have time to learn. Great. Now he also has chavruta, uh, one hour a day. Uh, what can I achieve in one hour? I must learn. I'll look at him. He's learning eight hours. No matter what you'll have, you won't be happy. Why? Because the Yatsarah is playing with your mind. And he tells you, brings negative thoughts into your mind to show you, to give you evidence that you're wrong. You know, even if you keep mitzvot, even if you do Torah, even if you do amazing stuff, he will destroy your happiness. So what's the weapon against him? To be happy even if you're not doing anything. Even if you just sit like that, empty-handed, poor from Torah, didn't put fill in today, didn't do shai, but the do, didn't went to the mikveh, can't learn, can't focus, only, only, can hear only black music on YouTube. That's the maximum I can do today. Be happy. Here, Hashem Yitvach is supplying. You can hear rap, you have amazing songs, you, at least your nefesh is working, you're alive. Maybe tomorrow you'll do tshuva. Even if you don't have the power, anything, you can only eat and go back to sleep. That's what you can do. You can drink another shot of whiskey and go back to bed. That's your, that's your ability today. 
if you're going to look deep into the reasons of why you cannot function, you're going to understand yourself. The reason that you hate yourself and you're so disturbed from your weaknesses, from your lackings, from your downs, from your failures, let's call them like that, it's because you don't understand yourself, because you haven't had a conversation with yourself on why you're so disturbed, on why you're so tired, on why you're so weak, on why you are so despaired that you just want to drink and go back to bed. But if you're going to check yourself, you're going to understand that you are really down, that you're really broken, that you're really sad, that you're really afraid, that you have reasons to be afraid because that situation is threatening you and you're afraid what's going to happen in that case and your wife is from the other side and your parents and your career and your children and your future and your health and you don't know and all of those thoughts are attacking you wave after the wave, wave after wave, one after the other, and you're losing your mind. And this is why you fall, and this is why you fail. And now if someone will come to you and tell you, hey, I'm afraid of A and B and C and D and E and, um, and on and on and on, and you're going to understand him, and you're going to love him, and you're going to care about him, and you're going to tell him, so listen, relax, take it easy, so what? So take another day off, so, uh, so what? So drink another shot of whiskey, nothing gonna, ha nothing gonna kill you. Really, you're not gonna die. So tomorrow morning, wake up, Bezat Hashem, you'll be better, and well, let's meet, let's go. Wednesdays it's free in the Bronx Zoo, let's go. Tomorrow is Wednesday, you see? So I'll see you tomorrow in the Bronx Zoo, right? I'm gonna be there alone. And you need to accept yourself, and to understand yourself, and to be happy with who that you are. Because if you're confused, so you're confused. If you're sad, you're sad. There's nothing to do about it. Maybe to think what to do. Maybe to try to relax. Maybe to try to... But if you're not going to think, and just going to hate yourself, and going to call yourself names, or you're lazy, or you're a bum, or you're this, you're that, you're useless, you're worthless, okay. It, you just destroy yourself with no reason. If you're just going to have a conversation with yourself, that's what we call it bodedut. And you're just going to talk to yourself about your pain, about your sorrow. You're going to understand that you are actually suffering and it's okay to suffer. And Hashem is with you even when you suffer. Like the verses are saying. That Hashem Barak is with you even when you're in the lowest place in hell. And even if you go in the valley of death, Hashem is with you. And even if you are in the most contaminated places, Hashem Barak is with you. And even if you're alone, not with the minyan, Hashem Barak is with you. And Hashem listens to your prayer even when you're not worthy. And even if you regret on your avonot, on your sins, so Hashem Barak is erasing and atones on all of your sins, erasing all of your sins. You regret on one avera, on one sin, the Gemara is saying, he regrets on one sin and they're going to erase, going to forgive him on all of his sins, plural. He feels bad, didn't do tshuva. He said, we said just, he feels regret. He just regret. He didn't do it, but the dut on it, he haven't opened his mouth, he didn't even ask forgiveness. He didn't say, I'm sorry. He didn't say one word to Hashem in Barach. He just feel bad with himself. The Gemara is saying, "Mochalin lo al kol avonotav." Now you don't believe that Gemara. I understand. I'm kofrim. You don't believe in the Torah, Gasha. It's a Gemara. I don't know why the, what 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 the rabbis are doing with those verses, with those Gemarot. I don't have a clue. All of those rabbis that are going and, and breaking the spirits of Am Yisrael. I don't know what they are doing with those verses. I don't have a clue. Today I received a message from a student of mine. She's saying, she's asking a message on, on WhatsApp. She's asking, I watch many lectures of many rabbis that I feel that are terrifying me and breaking my spirit. And I don't know if I need to break my fear and keep on hearing those lessons or that I just need to close those videos and not to watch them ever again. It's not even a question. It's clear. But thousands of people are suffering from that. 
you have rabbis that the main thing that they're doing while opening the class is to destroy everyone that sits in front of them, to destroy everyone, all of the rev all of the rest of the rabbis and all of the public that comes and sit in the class, everyone, to destroy everyone, to humiliate everyone. And then after they see everyone are dead, finished, murdered in front of their eyes, now he can say he's Dvar Torah, he's relaxed, he's calm, he's happy, now he can, he's, he ate. <laughs> it's an angel of death, it's not a rabbi. That's Malach Amaret. that's not a rabbi. And I'm telling all of you guys, if while I was explaining, I didn't mention no word, I didn't say no name of no rabbi. But if there was a rabbi in your mind, while I mentioned that tale, and I said, don't say no word, don't say no name. Everyone to himself. If while I said that explanation on a certain rabbi, you had one rabbi in mind, don't listen to that rabbi. Don't listen to that rabbi. I don't know who that rabbi is. Maybe for you it's one, for you it's another one. Don't listen to those ones. If you have that rabbi that is destroying you, don't listen to him. If for you he's the angel of death, I'm, I wouldn't go to the class of the angel of death. Oh, the angel of death, he's giving a class tonight. Oh, you can see him on YouTube. <laughs> he's on Torah anytime. Oh, I don't want. I don't want. I don't want to hear Torah from rabbis that wants to destroy people. And if you got that person in mind while I was describing a person that is destroying people, so don't follow him. What are you, crazy? Like I said to my wife, I am crazy and you're my students, you're crazy as well. Yes, you're going to keep on following him, I know. You have yet Yatzalava? That's why you're going to keep on following those rabbis that are destroying your life. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> There's no reason. You need to believe in yourself. And that's what we said before. The purpose is that every single individual will connect himself to the Creator. The connection to the Creator is an inner connection. Avodat Hashem, it's pnimiut. Pnimiut means inside. The inside of yourself. That's how you connect yourself to Hashem. If you went to a class, if you read, you opened the book and you read some article, some Dvar Torah, amazing, inspiring, great. What did you need to do with that is to listen to your inside. What woke up inside of you? Like I just now guided you. When I mentioned the rabbi that is killing his students and I haven't mentioned no one, you need to listen to your own soul. What is it saying to you? If it mentioned a certain name, you need to take that seriously. Because you have that devil in your life that is breaking your spirit to pieces. So reject him and don't follow him. And you need to listen to your inner voice that is talking to you from inside and telling you what is right and what is wrong. And it doesn't mean not to follow the rules of the Torah. It means to listen to your inner voice while you're learning Torah. When you read the verse, when it's saying, Okay, what that verse means to me? Okay, now it's written that you should respect your wife. Okay, in which way? If I will respect my wife like that you're respecting your wife, I'm not sure that it's going to work for me. Because my wife, she needs something else from me. And your wife, she needs something else from you. Because she's a different woman and you're a different husband and you have different paths together and you have different needs and different power and different abilities and different goals in life. And you need to be yourself and to find yourself and to be that one that is really you. And that's what Hashem wants from you. Hashem not going to judge you why you were not Dror Moshe <laughs> It wasn't me. What do you want from me? I cannot be him. But who can you be? Only yourself. So he will ask you, so why you were not loyal to yourself? Why you were not listening to your own feelings? Why you were not developing your self-awareness? Why you haven't connected yourself to your spiritual power, to your inner wisdom? To the light of your soul that was shining from inside, that was guiding you, that was giving you advice all of the time. Why you were not yourself? That's the question. And the answer on that is, okay, I'm going to start working on myself. To become myself, not to be afraid, not of people, not of opinions, not of emotions and feelings. Be afraid to feel disappointed, to feel alone, to feel rejected. So what? So you will be rejected. What can happen to you? What can happen to you? Nothing. Nothing in the world can happen to you. And you know why? 
because you will be with Hashem. And Hashem will stand by your side even if you're going to be the last one. Even if you're going to be left alone, Hashem will be there with you. I was learning in a very big yeshiva, in a very honorable yeshiva, in a very famous yeshiva, and something happened over there that was wrong. And I decided, consulting the chief rabbi of that yeshiva, that I'm going to leave the institute, that I won't learn there anymore, that I'll go on my own, that I'm going to do something on my own, because I couldn't stay over there anymore. And then, in one of the days, one of the rabbis that were teaching in that yeshiva came to me and asked me, what are you going to do after you're going to leave the yeshiva? Maybe they're not going to let you talk to the Rav anymore. Maybe they're not going to let you be close to a Rav anymore. What are you going to do? So I said, I won't have that problem. You're going to have that problem. If you're not, not, not going to let me see the Rav, it's your Ravon, it's your Avera. It's not, it's not going to be my Avera. It won't be. I need to be afraid not to be with a Rav if I love a Rav. I need to be afraid to sin. I don't need to be afraid not to, I need to be afraid of Hashem. I don't need to be afraid of the results. Results are after death. I need to be truthful to Hashem. I need to be loyal to Hashem. I don't need to play in games of polity, games of this world to be afraid. I said, when I'm going to leave the yeshiva, I'm going to go on my own. I believe that Arab will come with me. The spirit of Arab will follow me. If I was loyal to my teacher, my teacher will walk with me to the end of the world. Should I be afraid to leave my rabbi? If I love my rabbi from the bottom of my heart, if I know that I'm loyal to my rabbi, if I know that I was loyal to him always, if he himself testified me that I was loyal to him, if everything was 100% okay, so I need to be afraid? That they will be afraid. They should be afraid. They should be terrified because they were sinning against Hashem. If I was loyal, if I was truthful, if I was right, why did I be afraid? You're afraid only when you don't have Hashem. When you don't have Hashem, then you need to be afraid. Then really you need to be afraid. When you don't have Hashem, when you're lying, when you're sinning, when you're crying against Hashem. But if you're righteous, if you do only good, if you do the best that you can, you try to be positive, you try to do the best that you can, except of that, what else can you do? And now you're married, you have wife, you have children, you need to go to work, and you cannot learn. You don't have the time to sit for hours every day in Bet Midash and then open Gemara and learn. You don't have the time, you don't have the power. You don't have that ability. Because you need to wake up at 7 a.m. and to take your children to school and to go and to pray and to go to work and it starts at 9 or 8 or whatever, people work from 5. And until 5, and until five, 9, and until 10 at night. And, and, and what are you going to do? Is something you can do? If you're not going to pay your bills, if you're not going to pay your rent, if you're not going to pay the tuition for your children to learn in Jewish institute, what are you going to do? Nothing to do, right? Okay, so now, can you blame yourself on not, being, not le learning and also call yourself lazy? When you come back home at 5 p.m., at 7 p.m., sad and broken and tired and weak, and you don't have the power to open Gemara now and to learn Be'yun, Tosfot, and Rashi, and Ritva, and, 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 and Rif, and Ran, and the rest, the rest of them Farshim, and maybe to, to find some Chidushim for Parashat Shavua from the En Yaakov. Great, nice, I'm happy that other people are doing it. If I don't have the, 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 the gas for that, the steam for that, the battery for that, the energy for that, how in the world Hashem will want me to do something that is beyond my power? Now I'll be angry at myself that I'm not buying you a house. How can I be angry on, you, on myself that I'm not buying you a house if I'm not a billionaire, if I'm not a, so rich that I can just throw houses? Why is that I'm going to blame myself in something that is beyond my power? It's stupid, it's silly. So don't be silly. Not on your hour, not on your wisdom, not on your learning, not on davening, praying in shul, why I'm not going to pray in the minyan, not every, every Shabbat I'm not going to shul. Why not? Check yourself. If you see that it's beyond your power, so understand yourself and be positive and be happy even if you're home. And be happy even if you're not learning. And we're not saying don't want to learn. 
don't want to go to pray. No, you should want. But you should accept yourself and not to hate yourself and not to blame yourself. And just to be super positive about yourself and move on in life. And don't blame yourself on anything. And not even on the worst mistakes, worst failures, crimes that you committed. Check yourself. What was the reason? Maybe you grew up in a certain environment, in a certain family, with certain condition, and emotional stress, and fears, and anxieties, and, and I don't know what, which traumas you went through in life. And it, because that you, it is because that you are super sensitive. Okay, so, but you're sensitive, you're super sensitive. What can you do with that? Other people didn't feel like me. Okay, but I did. What can you do about it? If you were standing in a test that was bigger than you, that was harder, too hard for you to deal with, how can you blame yourself on that? You find yourself fighting, screaming, beating someone up. What can you do? What can you do? What can you do? You need to understand yourself. I was in a situation and I failed. Sometimes the test is not to fail. But if you fail, now the test is to do chuba, to come back to Hashem, to apologize, to ask forgiveness, to come back to Hashem, to confess in front of Hashem, to, to buy your way out somehow. Through that humiliation, being humble, accepting those, those, those humiliations. That's the only test. Only when David HaMelech said to Hashem, I was wrong, I sinned, I messed up, then he became the eternal king of our nation. Only when he became a Baal Shuvah, when he was still pure and righteous, he was still not the king of Israel, or the eternal king, the Mashiach. Only after that he made a mistake and he admit, and he was a man enough to admit, he was strong enough to say, yes, I messed up, Then he became the eternal king of Amistad. Before of that, he wasn't worthy. He was righteous, he was pure, but he was not worthy. Really, to be the eternal king of our nation, of the wide world, for that, you need to be humble. You cannot humble until Hashem in Barach breaks you to pieces. That's the only way, really, to be humble. When Hashem in Barach is humiliating you. He's showing you that you're not a husband, that you're not a father, that you're not a, a, a Talmid Chacham, a Torah scholar, that you only then that you're not pure, that you're not wise, that only then you're humble. Only when Hashem brings you to that place that you, okay Hashem, you are my only salvation. I cannot do anything on my own. Only when you help me, I'm succeeding. Only when you save my life, then I, I'm, I'm alive. That's the point that you have eternal life, that you live your life with Hashem. Only when you're humble. As long as you imagine, no, oh, I'm powerful, no, I'm strong, no, I'm huge, no, I'm wise, no, I'm talented, no, I'm gifted. Hashem gave me gifts. Great. If you let me use them, that's great. And if not, what can I do about it? That's the secret. The only way to do it is slowly. Slowly means to accept yourself, to love yourself, to appreciate yourself, to understand yourself, to be your own best friend. That's the only way. Without you being your own friend, accept yourself, love yourself, appreciate yourself, have deep conversations with yourself until you're going to know yourself. Develop self-awareness to yourself. Understand yourself. Why am I upset? Why am I angry? Why I'm so sad? Why am I so aggressive? Why am so? Why I'm attacking? Why I'm fighting back? Why I cannot shut my mouth? Why I'm always why? Until you're gonna know all of those to answer, you won't be able to be who did you really are. You must find out who you are. It's a conversation between you to yourself in front of the Creator. It's only you, in honesty, in front of the Creator. Hashem, please help me to understand myself, that I will be able to stand in those tests, that I won't fail again, that I won't scream, that I won't be upset, that I won't steal, that I won't lie, that I won't cheat, that I won't... That's the only way. I'm sorry, I was wrong. Is it too late now to say sorry? To sing to Hashem. What? Justin Bieber was inside. I don't know.
You allowed the song to sing to those songs, eh? You allowed. I'm telling you. If a guy is doing tshuva and he's asking if it's too late now to say sorry, so Chochma Bagoim Tami, so is them to the nation. It's smiling now. <laughs> it's wisdom between the nation. You should buy it. No problem. Sparks fell everywhere. Everyone are bringing something. Everyone are satisfying Hashem. You just need to find your own way to be connected to Hashem. To feel connected. To feel the real connection that exists. That is now exists. Between you and Hashem, it's an inner connection. It's how that you feel that Hashem Yudwach is with you. When you do something good, you feel good. When you do something wrong, you feel it, you know it. So go on the right side. Go positive with yourself. Build yourself. There is one person that can give money to charity. There is another person that he doesn't have that money. And he will give from his time. Or that he will give from his knowledge. Or that he will give from his other talents from his connections. He's going to connect you to someone else to help you. Feel good about what that you do and do. And if you feel wrong with something you do, so stop doing it. Just understand yourself that you're doing something wrong. If every time that you go to learn so your wife she's sad and depressed, if every time that you go to pray mincha in public so it makes your wife bother, check what's going on. And again, I want you to pray in a minyan every day. I wish that you will pray and that I will pray in a minyan every day. But if it doesn't work, so check why it doesn't work. How can it be that Hashem makes my wife angry when I go to pray in a minyan? How can, what Hashem, you don't want me to go to pray in a minyan? Is my wife an obstacle that I need to, what? no, my wife is not an obstacle. My wife is supposed to be my best friend. So how can it be that she's now my obstacle? Maybe there is something wrong that I'm doing. So check, go talk about it. Hashem, okay. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Let me understand. And be patient. Wait for the answers. They will come. The things that you don't know yet are the things that you haven't asked Hashem. Things that you asked Hashem seriously, you wanted the answer, Hashem already answered you. You know the truth. He never disappointed you. He's always with you. Just you're afraid to ask. Some things you're still afraid to ask. But if you will ask, you will be answered. This is why the highest level is Baal Tshuva. He knows the answer. He's got the answer. Baal Tshuva. He owns the answer. He knows. Why he knows? Because he always confesses. He's always going to Hashem. He always asks Hashem. I don't know. What should I do, Hashem? Help me. Answer me. And he receives answer. In the Ashgacha Prati, it's a provision of Hashem. Send me another message, another messenger, another coincidence, another something. Whoa, messages and, and signs and signals. And, whoa, and then you can see clearly. I can see clearly the rain. That's it. You need to be positive and to share and like and post our videos in all of your circles. And help us to save lives of people. So many people are coming back to life because of those short clips, because of the videos, the live on Facebook. Thousands of people are coming back to life. If it wouldn't be the truth, I promise you, I can swear to you, I wouldn't do it. If it wouldn't work, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't waste one minute of my life on doing something that is useless. If it wouldn't really save thousands of lives of people, I wouldn't do it. So it's an Amuna family, and you are more than welcome to join. Thank you. In this world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator, to remember that it's all Him, never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks.